Cornell Mars rover has worked tirelessly over the last seven months to design and manufacture our URC Ready rover, and we are excited to unveil Atlas. For the 2023 competition, we have focused on improving last year's weaknesses, inspiring a complete redesign of two subsystems. We split the academic year into a fall design phase, a winter manufacturing phase, and a spring testing phase. During this last phase, our six sub-teams test and make final changes to the rover to prepare for URC. The ARM sub-team is responsible for building and designing the rover's robotic arm. The DRIVE sub-team oversees the rover's suspension, wheels, frame, and electronics housing development. The electrical sub-team develops the hardware required to communicate with the rover and power onboard actuators and sensors. The software sub-team handles rover controls, path planning, user interfaces, and computer vision. The astrobiological technology sub-team is responsible for onboard soil delivery and analysis for the life detection task. And finally, the business sub-team manages finances, web and presentation design, and outreach to sponsors and the public. The ARM sub-team has focused on testing and modifying previous designs, primarily aiming to improve control and visibility. Absolute rotary encoders will be implemented in each joint to provide precise position information for inverse kinematics. This year, the ARM uses a combination of cycloidal and strain wave gearing at the joints. Two new cameras have been added to assist the ARM. The first is the Extendo cam, which is mounted on the side of the frame. Controlled by servos, a pan tilt camera provides perspective when performing tasks. The second camera is attached directly to the parallel end effector. Coupled with a point laser, it provides close-up views when interacting with the environment. This year, the drive subsystem has undergone a redesign to better fit the streamlining of our suspension system that occurred last year. Our 3D printed wheels are lighter and more reliable. The increased rigidity of the tire enables the suspension to perform better on sloped terrain. The treads on the four corner wheels are tangent to the rover's turning radius, allowing for easier point turning. The rover frame's footprint is smaller and the center of mass of the rover has been shifted on top of the rocker bogey pivot, which further increases climb performance. Our e-core is smaller than last year, but now holds over double the number of boards. All the boards mount to a modular removable rack. The electrical sub-team has created a variety of PCBs to control all the rover's actuators and sensors. We have upgraded our system to use STM32 microcontrollers, allowing for faster firmware development. We use MicroROS to interface with our software system to improve communication reliability. Our upgraded power distribution system includes current sensing that allows for us to record and understand the rover's power consumption from our 25.9 volt battery. We use 900 megahertz and 5 gigahertz transceivers in order to accurately send and receive data from our base station, which can be over two kilometers away. This year, the software team worked hard to rebuild the software stack as we switched from ROS1 to ROS2. This change brought many design improvements to every subsystem. To communicate with the electrical subteam, we leveraged ROS2 control to implement a hardware abstraction layer which improved motor precision and code maintainability. Our autonomy system is now built on the ROS2 navigation stack, and we re-implemented our search algorithm with a behavior tree which is easier to tune. We are still using inverse kinematics to control the arm. However, this year we developed a computer vision algorithm to automate parts of the equipment service mission and perform it faster than before. On the mechanical side, we collect soil with multiple scoops to reduce cross-contamination. We mix the soil with a buffer using magnetic stir bars. Then we pump the solution into our analysis chamber to analyze the sample with spectroscopy. To detect life in soil, we use a fluorophore and a fluorometer to measure the concentration of cells in the soil quantitatively, using a variety of simulated desert soils which we sterilize in an autoclave or inoculate with different concentrations of bacteria, we can test the ability of our life detection assay. We have a collection of assays that can detect molecules in the soil like calcium carbonate, nitrogen, phosphorus, and more, as well as other indicators of life. With a focus on reliability, we have a rigorous testing plan. We divided the entire team into four task teams, one for each URC mission. Each task team lead develops and executes an incremental testing strategy, testing different tasks within each mission. Our testing sessions have also enabled us to cross-train team members for operations and rapid repairs of the rover. With many systems being modular, task teams can test slightly different designs to evaluate functionality. These distinct task teams have already started to strategize for each task, verify reliability, and prepare us for our two mock competitions where the URC missions are completed in a single day. These allow the competition team to practice under time-constrained conditions to fully prepare for the trials of the University Rover Challenge. Atlas and the rest of the team are just about ready for competition and we hope to see you in Utah.